welcome. I'm Marina and I'm a professional film photographer and the founder of If We're Film. And this is the second video of a series of three called the best analog photography guides for beginners in which I'm going to cover all the basics you need to know if you want to start film photography. If you haven't watched the video in which I explain types and formats of film cameras and which cameras I recommend to start with, please go and check the link of the first video that is in the description box. Watch the video and then come back to this one. So finally, we just arrived to the part that I really like the most. The use is part of analog photography. Films! Films! <laughs> In this video, I'm going to cover two important questions. First of all, what are the basics I need to know about films? And second, which films are ideal to start with? Films can be classified according to three simple criteria. By its size, by the resulting image, and by its light sensitivity. If we want to classify the films by each size, then we have here three big brothers. 35mm films, 120 films and large format films. 35mm films, I'll say that is the most popular format. It has perforations of both sides and it comes inside a canister. They're super easy to find and you can find very cheap ones. You can get 35mm films that has 24 exposures of 36 or even 12 exposures, although it's quite rare. 120 films is a medium format film used by many professionals as its size allows you to capture higher amount of detail when we compare with 35mm films. And also for being able to take images with a shallower depth of film, you know that kind of images that the subject pops out from the image and the background is blur? Then that's a shallow depth of film. One trillion film comes wrapped around a plastic spool and depending on which camera you're using, you can take from 8 to 16 exposures. This is because medium format cameras divide the shots differently. The reason why we have different image sizes. 6x6, 6x4.5, 6x7, 6x8 and 6x9. Then we have our last big brother, large format films. Large format films is a catch-all term for sizes larger than medium format. These large format films are unlike 35mm films, individual film sheets packed in boxes. The most popular size is 4x5 but you can still find 5x7 and 8x10. Large format films are also known for being used by many professional landscape photographers since the image that you get from a large film, it's incredible. It's superb, honestly. Well, we just seen the big three brothers of film format. But look, since I know that you might have a camera that doesn't use any of these sizes that I mentioned before, let me just quickly mention the sizes that you can still find. APS 110 126, 127 and 620. Well, now that we know what kind of sizes of film we can find, let's talk about the types of film that you can find by the resulting image. We have basically three types of film. Black and white negative films, color negative films and color positive films. Black and white negative films are the most traditional films of analog photography. The photos that we get are monochrome and in order to develop these films we need to use specific chemicals for developing black and white films. Once we develop these films we can see that the colors, in this case monochromatic, they are inverted, which is why they're called black and white negatives. And then we have color negative films. Color negative films are the films that captures color photographs. Once you develop a color negative film, you can see that it's orange tints and its colors are inverted. That's why, like black and white negative films, we're going to need either an enlarger or a scanner to see properly the colors. The process used to develop color negative films is called C41. That's why we also call these films C41 films. Right, so color positive films create positive color images, which means that once you develop these films, you don't need to use any enlarger or a scanner to see correctly the colors. 
This type of pen produces very vivid colors and uses a different developing process called E6. Reason why it's sometimes we call these guys E6 films. Looks like films could be the most rewarding film to look at, but nevertheless, the one that I recommend the least for somebody who wants to start film photography. First of all, because of the slight film sprite is very expensive. And secondly, because your exposure needs to be very accurate. Now let's jump to the last criteria when we classify films light sensitivity or film speed. I'm sure you might have seen some numbers on film canisters, film boxes, like 100, 200, 400. Those numbers are what it's called the ISO or the film speed. The ISO is super easy to understand. It indicates us basically how sensitive is the film to the light. They are usually in the range of 50, 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. And here's the thing, the higher the ISO number is, the more sensitive is the film to the light. Whereas the lower the ISO number is, the less sensitive is the film to the light. Look, to sum it up, there are two groups, slow speed films and fast speed films. Slow speed films generally refers to film with 200, 100 or below ISO ratings. They're good for outdoors on sunny days and they have less grain. Fast speed films generally refers to films faster than 400. So ISO numbers like 800, 1600, 3200 are considered fast films. Fast speed films are good for overcast days, indoors, but they have more grain, but far less ugly than the digital noise. Well, we arrive to the question that you probably you were waiting for, which is which films are ideal to start with? There are plenty of films that I like you to discover and experiment with, but let me be honest with you. If you're going to start film photography right now, I suggest you to get super cheap films, but decent. Because yep, I'm really sorry for being a killjoy, but I guarantee that you're going to make many mistakes and even you're going to ruin your film. But don't worry, that's why we have have what we call the budget films. If you want to start shooting with color films, my recommendations are Kodak Color Plus 200, Kodak Gold 200, Fujifilm C200, and Fujifilm Superior 400 Extra. Or if you want to start shooting with a traditional black and white film, my recommendations are Ilford HP5 Plus 400, Kensmare 400, Aqua Photo APX 400, and Foma Pan Classic 100. And a bonus film that I always love to mention, but doesn't fit into the budget films section, is the Ilfor XP2. The Ilfor XP2 is a very contrasty film. But this one can be developed with color developing chemicals, which means that if you're going to send your XP2 to your lab, it's going to be a little bit cheaper for you, since the price for developing color films is a little bit cheaper than black and white. By the way, all the films that I mentioned before, you can get them at Analog Wonderland Shop. So all the links are here in the description box. Whew. Well, I think this is it for now. If you have any doubts or questions or anyone wants to add something helpful for beginners, please go ahead and leave us here your comments. Please. I'll see you in the third and last video. Bye bye. Come on, just go there. Just one last effort. Adios. Hasta luego. Adios. Bueno, nos vemos, ¿no? Más bien. Bye bye.